Welcome back to the Evolution of Fighter Planes series, the series where we look at the best fighter aircraft that flew in each notable war. Previously, we looked at how the Cold War escalated the development of fighter aircraft technology and saw the introduction of the first V-Stol jet in the form of the Hawker Siddeley Harrier. This time, we'll be looking into the fourth generation of fighters, which were the pinnacle of Cold War technology. Only between fight or surrender. The McDonnell Douglas F-15. The concept of the F-15 first came to light when McDonald Aircraft entered the second phase of the US Air Force's FX competition in 1967. McDonald faced competition from the Fairchild Hiller and North American Rockwell. However, McDonald were able to apply the lessons learned from the Vietnam War, which saw their F-4 Phantoms prove to be very successful. Be sure to have a watch of the previous video to learn more about that. On the 23rd of December 1969, McDonnell Douglas officially won the Advanced Tactical Fighter Contract, and so work began on the creation of one of history's most successful fighter planes. The F-15 took the military aviation world by storm, quickly smashing the time to climb record by achieving over 98,000 feet in just 3 minutes and 27 seconds, thanks to its two Pratt & Whitney F-100 afterburning turbofan engines, which topped the fighter out at Mach 2.5. Weapons-wise, the F-15 features a 20mm cannon whilst also having a total of 9 hardpoints, which would carry a total of 16,000 or 7,300 kilos of ordnance. Typically an air-to-air -air equipped F-15 would feature a combination of AIM-7 Sparrows, AIM-9 Sidewinders and AIM-120 AMRAMs. The F-15 established itself as a proven killer during the Gulf War. It recorded 36 out of the 39 recorded American Air Force's kills on Iraqi forces, which themselves were armed with some impressive fighter planes. The F-15s notably killed five MiG-29s, which too were fourth generation fighters, whilst also downing two MiG-25s, which, as we discussed in the previous video, were the reason the F-15 program was accelerated. Today, the F-15 has recorded a sensational air-to-air -air combat record of 104 kills to zero losses. Size-wise, the F-15 measured in at 63 feet and 9 inches in length, with a wingspan of 42 feet and 10 inches. Today, there are multiple models and operators of the F-15. Israel, Japan and Saudi Arabia purchased multiple units of the American fighter, but perhaps the most bizarre operator of the F-15 is NASA who utilised the jet to conduct a wide variety of flight research experiments. The Su-27 In 1969, the Soviets learned of the American FX programme, which resulted in the F-15. It became almost immediately apparent to the Soviet leaders that this new jet the Americans were developing would be unbeatable with their current airframes, and so the next race was on to develop a countermeasure. The Soviet scientists and engineers were commissioned to create two aircraft, the result of which led to the MiG-29 and the other program, the Su-27. These aircraft were designed to complement each other. However, it was the Su-27 that was the new jewel in the Soviet Air Force's arsenal. The Su-27 proved to be an incredibly difficult project, with multiple setbacks and accidents occurring with the fighter. However, in 1985, the Su-27 finally entered service. The Su-27, in hindsight, was the last major fighter to enter the service of the Soviet Union before their eventual collapse. The aircraft's purpose was to match the capabilities of both the F-14 and F-15, whilst also acting as an interceptor for the American Strategic Air Command bombers, the B-52 and the B-1. The Su-27 could offer bomber support for the Soviets' own heavy bombers, such as the Tu-95, the Tu-22M and the Tu-160. The Su-27 was equipped with a 30mm gun, accompanied with 150 rounds of ammunition. It featured 10 hardpoints, which could equip R-27R1s and T-1 medium-range missiles, R-73E close combat air-to-air -air missiles, and 100kg to 500kg of free-fall, incendiary or cluster bombs, and C-8 and C-13 and C-25 unguided aerial missiles. The Su-27 is perhaps most famous for its ability to perform the Cobra maneuver. The Su-27's combat record is often disputed, yet many report its air-to-air kill-loss ratio to be 6 to 0. The majority of these kills were recorded by the Ethiopian Air Force during the war between Ethiopia and Eritrea. The Su-27 was pitted against the very aircraft it was designed to complement, the MiG-29. The Su-27 reportedly came out on top in every encounter. The Soviet fighter was 71 feet and 10 inches in length, 
with the wingspan of 48 feet and 3 inches. Today, the Su-27 can be seen to be operated by 12 countries, one of which is America, who uses the aircraft as an aggressor aircraft for their Air Force's pilots. The Eurofighter Typhoon The Eurofighter Typhoon began development in 1983 through the commission of the Future European Fighter Aircraft Programme, which saw the UK, Germany, France, Italy and Spain come together to build a world-beating air superiority fighter that would further their defensive capabilities against the Soviet Union. Despite some of the world's best military aviation engineers working on the project, the Typhoon was played with extensive delays. The French soon abandoned the project to develop the more multi-role focus for file, leaving the remaining countries to finance and complete the project without them. The sudden end of the Cold War saw the Typhoon become ever more difficult to justify, but eventually in August 2003, the Eurofighter Typhoon entered active service. The Eurofighter Typhoon has often been compared to its French counterpart, the Rafale, and the American fifth generation F-22 and F-35. It's important to stress that the Typhoon is a born and bred air superiority fighter. It specialises in being the very definition of fighter plane. The Typhoon is hailed for its incredible manoeuvrability and ability to sustain high G-forces. The United States Air Force's Chief of Staff, John P. Jumper, who at the time was the only person to have flown both the Typhoon and the F-22 Raptor, he concluded that the F-22 performs in much the same way as the Eurofighter. The fourth generation Typhoon's ability to keep up with what many perceive is the current pinnacle of fighter plane technology in the form of the fifth generation F-22 Raptor emphasises the true capabilities of the Eurofighter Typhoon. The Typhoon can be equipped with a range of weapons, including a 27mm cannon and 13 hardpoints, capable of carrying a range of air-to-air, -air, sea and ground missiles, and multiple types of bombs. The Eurofighter features two afterburning turbofan engines built by Eurojet, which are based on the Rolls-Royce XG40. These engines top the Typhoon out at Mach 2.0. The Eurofighter Typhoon had a length of 52 feet and 4 inches, with a wingspan of 35 feet and 11 inches. Today, the Typhoon could be seen operated by a number of nations, including a number of nations outside of the EU. These include Oman, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia and Qatar. The Typhoon itself has yet to see air-to-air -air combat, however reports say that it consistently performs well at the Red Flag events. Honourable Mentions The F-16 The F-16 was officially codenamed the Fighting Falcon, but it's predominantly referred to as the Viper by its pilots and operators. The F-16 is the backbone of the United States Air Force. It is held for its exceptional manoeuvrability and combat radius, with a total of 4,600 of the aircraft being built and distributed to a number of nations. The F-16 is combat proven, with an air-to-air -air kill ratio of 76 kills to 1 loss. The F-16 has continued to be upgraded since its introduction in 1978, with multiple models and variations being produced. The Rafale The Rafale is the jet produced by France instead of continuing with the Eurofighter Typhoon. Their creation of the Rafale saw an airframe that was a remarkable jack-of-all-trades that has proven successful at air supremacy, reconnaissance and air-to-ground missions. The French Air Force and Navy respectively operate the Rafale. The Rafale has seen combat over Afghanistan, Libya, Mali, Iraq and Syria. And that's it for this episode of the Evolution of Fighter Planes. Next time, we'll be diving into the fifth generation of fighter jets, where we'll see the pinnacle of the modern fighter jet. As some of you may have realized, I've only featured jets that were originally designed as fourth generation fighters and not mentioned airframes referred to as fourth plus fighters. If you'd like to see a special episode where we mention these upgraded fourth generation jets, please leave a like and make sure you subscribe.